right, so today we're going to talk about type 6 and 7. Just to remind you what that looks like, let me bring this closer to you. Okay, um, type 6 shape, these are fluffy pieces with ragged edges. They might be a little mushy, and because of that, um, it might be a little bit of an emergency getting to the bathroom. So it's kind of hard to control your urge here, which means that maybe your colon is hyperactive. Something has irritated your colon, a bacterial something, maybe you ate too many vegetables and your body wasn't able to handle it. Just I mean, it could be anything, but oh, you know what else really can bring this on are laxatives. You know, I hope you're not doing laxatives to try to clean out your intestinal tract, thinking that this is a good way to lose weight. I'm telling you, it is not. The best way to control your weight is through the proper diet and exercise, which is slow, but anything slow and meticulous is worthwhile at the end. Okay, so the other thing that could bring this on, spices. So if you're not used to having hot salsa and you go to a Mexican restaurant, you have hot chili peppers, and you might like, ooh, it might, increase your motility in your intestinal tract. Okay, and now type seven. This is watery diarrhea. This is just water coming out. Very, very difficult to control to get to the bathroom on time. Um, here you, um, you might get this situation because maybe you're getting ready for a GI procedure and your doctor has asked you to do this cleansing fast that will clean out your intestines, make them squeaky clean. Okay, the other thing that could bring this on, well, little children also might have a problem with this because maybe their intestinal tract got um, irritated. Dehydration is really, really, uh, severe here because you're getting rid of a lot of your water and you know sometimes with type 1 remember we talked about that that that's kind of a constipation what happens is um, because you're trying to push the water the, the the poop out the water gets trapped behind the poop and then it has a little opportunity that maybe a bunch of the little goopy, watery um, specimen comes through past the, the impaction, and then that's also a problem. Okay, so how do you take care of all this? Well, you know, diet is always the best way to handle things. I was going to do a special on just what to eat, but let me just do this really quickly for you. 35 grams of fiber every day. Drink lots and lots of water. If you're finding that your motility of your intestinal tract is slowed down, then you want to push more water. You want to increase your fiber. You want to increase your exercise because that will get everything moving. People that have surgery, they might be given medication that might slow down the motility of the intestinal tract. So if that's you, just make sure you're drinking lots and lots of water. All right, now if you're going the other way and your um, specimen moves through the intestinal tract quickly, then obviously you want to start eating things that are going to increase the mass and absorb water, something that will slow down the absorption. No, it's not pain medication, <laughs> although that does stop, you know, slow down the motility. But take more fiber so everything will... Uh, move through the intestinal tract at a comfortable pace for you. All right, one last thing about fiber. The importance about fiber. Fiber is kind of, you can think about it as an intestinal broom sweeper. It just goes like, if this is the walls of my intestine, the fiber goes and scrapes all the sediment that stands and and kind of accumulates in the intestinal wall, which keep you from absorbing the vitamins properly and nutrients. 
um, it um, could create problems with little pockets and things getting stuck inside these little pockets and then you can get an infection, diverticulitis, inflammation of the diverticulum, which are the little pockets. There's many things that could happen. So have your fiber, drink lots of water, and exercise every day. I'll see you next time.